Hi, my name is R.C. Sharma, and today I'm going to talk about mental illnesses or psychiatric disorders among intellectually or developmentally disabled individuals served by Ohio Department of Developmental Disabilities. To begin with, we all know that mental illnesses are diseases or conditions that affect how you feel, think, or relate to other people or your surroundings. Um, it's an important public health problem. Uh, National Institute of Mental Health estimates that about 25% of U.S. adults and 13% of American children are diagnosed with a mental illness during a given year. Um, mental illnesses are also associated with chronic diseases, this chronic diseases like diabetes, epilepsy, cardiovascular diseases, and it can result in poor quality of life. So the objective of our study was to quantify the prevalence of mental illnesses or psychiatric disorders among adults with intellectual or developmental disabilities served by Ohio DODD and to see how the prevalences changed over time. Um, the second objective was to estimate uh, the proportion of ID slash DD individuals taking medications for, the men for mental illnesses. And the third objective was to know the most frequent mental illnesses that were associated with emergency room visits. So to meet the first two objectives, we used national core indicators, uh, adult consumer survey data. And to meet our third objective, we used uh, Medicaid claims data from QDSS, which is Medicaid Data Warehouse. So what's NCI? NCI is a collaborative effort between National Association of State Directors of Developmental Disabilities Services and Human Services Research Institute. Um, it conducts several different surveys um, every year, but we use their adult consumer surveys to um, analyze and get to the results of this presentation today. Um, so adult consumer survey collects information on health conditions of people with intellectual or developmental disabilities, the services they receive, and how they feel about their services. Our study population for this study included a random sample of adults aged 18 years or more with intellectual or developmental disabilities served by the state of Ohio. And the data that we had was from years 2008-9 to 15-16. Um, the mental health questions that was included in the survey was from the background section. And the answer to those uh, mental health questions were collected by um, SSAs uh, from the state records or, or by case managers. These are the list of mental health conditions that were asked about in the survey. Um, mood disorders, anxiety disorders, behavioral challenges, like, and psychotic disorders. Uh, mood disorders include depression, mania, bipolar disorders, etc. cetera. Um, anxiety disorders include obsessive disorders, panic disorders, etc. Behavioral challenges include illnesses like um, self-injurious behavior, aggression, pica, etc. And psychotic disorders include um, schizophrenia, hallucinations, etc. So before we discuss about the prevalence of mental illnesses in DD population, I want to show you some slides of, that shows the characteristics characteristics of our study population. Um, so this slide uh, is about the, a it shows the average age of study population um, by year. You can see that the average age of our study population is pretty consistent, around 40 years. So this slide shows the distribution of gender in our study population. The, bl the blue portion of the bar uh, represents male. You can see that um, our population has slightly more males than females. This slide shows the distribution of race in our study population. Um, you can see that majority of our study population are white, white 
followed by Black or African American, um, and less proportion of our study population where other races like um, Hispanic, American Indian, or mixed races. This slide shows uh, you the prevalence of common disabilities or health conditions among our study population, and uh, we have included only some of the major disabilities or health conditions um, that's our, that are more common in our population. And among the, among the disabilities or conditions that are listed at the bottom of the slide, um, you can see that seizure disorder, the prevalence of seizure disorder was highest, um, which was around like slightly more than 25% of the population had seizure disorders. Um, and the second most common uh, disability was um, cerebral palsy, which is represented by orange line. Um, and we know that the less common um, disabilities were Prader-Willi syndrome, chemical dependency, and chemical dependency. Uh, one thing to notice here is that uh, the prevalence of autism spectrum syndrome um, increased from 14, 15 to 15, 16. Um, we are not sure uh, the exact reason for the increase in this prevalence, but it could just be because of the increased benefits of being diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder. Um, it would be interesting to see how this prevalence uh, looks like in the upcoming years. So from here onwards, we'll talk about mental illnesses in DD population. Um, this slide shows the proportion of DD individuals um, with mental illnesses or psychiatric disorders. Uh, you can see that uh, the proportion of people who reported to have mental illnesses have increased from 2008-9 to 15-16. In 8-9, around 36% of people uh, were reported to have uh, mental illnesses compared to 55% in 15-16. Um, one thing to notice here is that uh, in, from years 8-9 to 11-12, uh, the question they asked was, does this person have any kind of mental illnesses? But from years 12-13 to 15-16, they asked, does this person have mood disorder, anxiety disorder, behavioral challenges, uh, psychotic disorders, or any kind of mental illnesses? So they had, like, they had different variables for each of those conditions. Um, so I created for, to analyze the prevalence for years 12, 13 to 15, 16, I created a separate variable based on the answers to those questions. So we also wanted to know if the prevalence of mental illnesses var varied by gender. Um, you can see that uh, the prevalence of mental illnesses was almost the same, almost the same in males and females. Um, the orange dots and the blue dots are pretty close together. Um, the, there was a slight difference in years. 2010, 11, 11, 12, but those, I think those differences won't be significant. So this slide shows the proportion of uh, developmentally disabled individuals diagnosed with different types of mental illnesses. You can see that the prevalence for mood disorder, which is represented by green line, um, is highest, um, followed by uh, the orange line, which represents anxiety disorder, the dark orange. Um, however, in 15, 16, the prevalence for anxiety and uh, psychotic disorder was like very close. Um, we also tested uh, if these prevalences were significantly different across years um, uh, uh, by using chi-square tests, and the p-values that we obtained were highly significant. So we can say that the prevalence of these mental health conditions like mood disorders, anxiety disorders, behavioral challenges, psychotic disorders, and other mental illnesses or psychiatric diagnoses have increased significantly over time. Um, and we don't have data from, so this question was new in the year 12, 13. Uh, it was not asked in years before that, so we don't have data, we don't have information for the years before 12, 13. 
So this slide shows the proportion of individuals diagnosed with mood disorder, anxiety, or psychotic disorders, and those who take medications for at least one of them. The red line um, represents the proportion of people diagnosed with mood, anxiety, or psychotic disorders, like any one of those. And the blue line represents proportion of people who take medications for those conditions. Um, you can see that in years 13, 14, to 15, 16, about the same proportion of people were diagnosed with those conditions, and the same proportion took medication for the conditions. But in year 12, 13, the proportion of people who took medications for the conditions were slightly higher than those who were diagnosed with the condition. So this means that some of the people who were not diagnosed with these conditions were taking medications for those conditions. So this slide shows among those with mood, anxiety, or psychotic disorders, what proportion of them took medications for the condition. Um, so you can see that a high proportion of people who were diagnosed with uh, mood, anxiety, or psychotic disorders took medications for the condition um, around like 80 to 90 percent. So this slide shows um, among those without mood, anxiety, or psychotic disorders, what proportion of individuals took medications for the condition. Uh, and you can see that around like 16 percent of people without those conditions took medication for mood, anxiety, or psychotic disorders. And it seems to be, but it seems to be decreasing over time. Like in 12, 13, 16% of them took medications. In 13, 14, 13%, and it's decreasing, uh, seems to be decreasing. This slide shows the proportion of individuals diagnosed with behavioral challenges and those who take medications for it. So the blue line is those who take medications for behavioral challenges. The red one represents those who were diagnosed with behavioral challenges. Uh, in years 12, 13 to 14, 15, about the same proportion of people were diagnosed with behavioral challenges and were taking medications for the condition. Um, but in 15, 16, um, the proportion of people who were taking medications for behavioral challenges were less than those who were diagnosed with behavioral challenges. So some of the people who were diagnosed with the condition were not taking medications for the condition. Um, we also did chi-spread tests to see if the proportion of people diagnosed with behavioral challenges were significantly different across years. And the p-value we obtained was very significant. So there was differences in the proportion of like there was there, there was a difference in the prevalence of behavioral challenges among DD individuals across years. So this slide shows um, among those with um, behavioral challenges, what proportion of individuals took medications for the condition. Um, so you can see that about half. Half of the people who were diagnosed with behavioral challenges were taking medications for the condition. When you recall back, uh, people who were diagnosed with mood, anxiety, or psychotic disorders, like around 80% of them were taking medications. But for people who were diagnosed with behavioral challenges, only about 50% of them are taking medications for the condition. So, and this um, slide shows among those without behavioral uh, challenges, what proportion were taking medications for the condition. Um, so, you can see that around 8% of people who were not diagnosed with behavioral challenges were taking medication for the condition. And this proportion is actually less than um, the proportion of people who were taking medication for mood, anxiety, or psychotic disorders. So this slide uh, shows the percentage of individuals taking medications for mood disorder, anxiety disorder, or psych psychotic disorder by number of medications and year. Um, 
you can see that uh, majority of the individuals uh, so so the ends in the top at the top is the total number of individuals who were taking at least one medication so you can see that majority of the individuals were taking one to two medications for mood disorder anxiety or psychotic disorders and then about a, a quarter were taking three to four medications and about like seven to nine percent of them were taking five to ten medications for those conditions. So this slide shows the percentage of individuals taking medications for behavioral challenges uh, by number of medications. Um, as in the previous case, uh, most of the individuals are taking medications for like most of the individuals are taking one to two medications. Um, a quarter of them are taking three to four medications, and all the, like, and a very low proportion of them are taking five to ten medications. So, if you compare the proportion of people taking five to ten medications for um, for behavioral challenges with the proportion of people taking, if you go back, um, proportion of people taking five to ten medications for mood to uh, for mood anxiety or psychotic disorders uh, you can see that those taking five to ten medications for mood anxiety or psychotic disorders are higher like here six to nine percent are taking five to ten medications but for behavioral challenges like only uh, three to five percent six percent are taking five to ten medications for behavioral challenges. If you'd like to pause there for a second, mm -hmm. Marcy, I see we have a question, and we're sort of switching topics now. Uh, someone has asked, how is behavioral challenge defined in the NCI data? Does a medical professional assign this diagnosis? The way the question is asked is, so does this person have behavioral challenges? And in the bracket, it says behavioral challenges include aggression, self-injurious behaviors, etc. So if the state record so that the person has uh, aggression, aggressive behavior or they have like self-injurious behavior, then I guess the SSA would check it as yes, that person has behavioral challenges. But if they if the state record does not indicate that those people have those conditions, then they won't be considered under behavioral challenges. I don't know how the state maintains records of their, their diagnosis. I guess their diagnosis should have been um, done by the professional and, and thus it gets into the state record. So I it guess- It vary by county as well mm -hmm. on how things are recorded and how things are tracked. Mm -hmm. 